Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jury Rig Garage. I'm Davis. Today we're going to be working on my newly acquired 1986 Fiero GT. In the last video, you guys saw that we picked it up. It was in pretty rough shape, but pretty much right as we got it back, I went through everything and I did start some of the work. I kind of wish I had recorded it, but I'll just go back and kind of show you some of the stuff that I did. But I, I basically went through everything trying to find exactly what it will need to get uh, roadworthy and running. There are a couple things the day after I brought it back, none of the doors worked. It was completely like frozen shut, the lock and the door handle. So through some finagling, I was able to get them both open. Unfortunately, the passenger side experienced some damage, but you can see that all works and handles all good. But the inside door handle broke had to kind of take apart everything and uh, get it all loosened up and sprayed with PB Blaster, but the door works now. I just need to replace, or I have the replacements for the door handles because bro both of them broke in that process. Also, the big problem with the car was it didn't shift at all. I couldn't get it in gear when it was, uh, the motor was on. So I went ahead and took apart the center console to get the shifter linkages out. You basically just have to take off the center console with a bunch of uh, seven millimeter bolts. You do have to take apart the front a little bit. Um, unfortunately, the this one came with a broken center skeleton part. So you can see here, this is supposed to connect up here. It's a whole frame that goes from back to front and up. So it actually kind of helped me because I would have had to take apart this way more, but it just gives you access to two nuts and bolts down here. You can see better now with the light, you can see those two studs. And then there's a couple studs up here. You know, those two. I have a video actually of uh, pulling out the shifter and taking that out so you can see it. And then the shifter cables go under the skeleton. You have to remove the PCM here. And then there's two grommet holes. From there, you just uh, cut the grommets. And it looks like the previous owner actually already did this or one of the previous owners. So that kind of saves me a little bit of time. And uh, from there, pull it out from the engine bay area, just pulls right through. Actually way easier than I thought it was gonna be. Did not take a lot of time to do that at all. And then once those are removed, you can just easily unbolt the shifter and take it out. Also in the process of trying to get the doors open, I forgot this, the, uh, the door pin, I tried unscrewing it. And when I went to screw back in, the nut that's inside fell out. So don't exactly know how I'm gonna solve that. I might just actually need to weld that in or figure out how to get inside to get the the nut that sits on the opposite side back in place. I might be able to find this thread pitch and put a rib nut in there. I don't know if that'll be strong enough. I have a couple options, but yeah, we'll just have to tackle that once we're there. But for now, if I just kind of put it in place and slam the door, it latches like that. Here is all, or most, I think I might be waiting on one other thing. Most of the parts that I have purchased for just refreshing it, I got new plug wires, plugs, coils, new connectors, because a lot of the connectors are broken in there. Uh, the fuel pump that came with the car, I'm assuming it needs one if it, there was one there. New shifter cables, and then slave cylinder, fuel filter, some upgrades for the actual uh, pedal, and the shifter itself leading tool, new door handles, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much everything I have here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be tackling everything in one video. I do want to at least start on getting the shift pedals together and shifter together because I have the rebuild kits for them. Over the decades of the car in use, just there's a lot of common wear areas when it comes to these things. It turns out my car is actually the four speed and not the five speed get drag. So not, that, not the biggest thing in the world, not a problem because down the road I'm going to be swapping to a F23 transmission. That's just the upgraded five speed um, found on some newer GM cars. I did get the rebuild for it. There's, it doesn't go as in depth as a five speed. This one's actually a little bit better, I guess. I don't know because the five speed had way more stuff to rebuild with it. So what we have here is a pin that will help with the, the left and right movement of it. And then some other rebuild parts here. I believe this is for the return here and new bushings for it. The pedal itself, these things over time, you can see it's kind of like shaped like a U. Over time, these bend. So I already bent it back in shape and then I ground off the paint. We have a reinforcement kit to install. So just big plate steel, I'm gonna TIG weld it in. Reinforces that. I have new bushings for the, uh, the actual pivot part of it. And then a new 
design clutch pin here or pivot pin, whatever you call it, and then a custom bushing for it. So there'll be no slop in the shifter or the clutch pedal. I have new shifter lines. These are custom length for my application. So no guessing with adjusting the size of it. I got new coil. I think I already mentioned that. Yeah, new slave cylinder, all this. So with all this together, there should be no, pretty much no slop in the shifting at all. There's even, I think, a bracket rebuild for the transmission side. So hopefully no slop in the, in the shifting at all. Clutch will feel great. The shifting will feel great. So hopefully that fixes it and it's not an actual transmission problem. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this. I think I might start with the clutch pedal. Just get this uh, finished up. I just need to get a Dremel to remove some of the more paint. Weld in the supports, add the new bushings to it, and then add the new pivot pin. And this is ready to go back in and I can show you guys that process. It's actually pretty easy on this, uh, this year car. It's just a uh, long bolt that goes all the way through. You just remove a nut on this side, pull the bolt out so this slides down. And then once you're ready to put it back together, put this back up in there, slide the bolt through and then tighten the nut on it and you'll be good to go. But guys, I'm gonna go ahead and start researching some of the instructions for it because there's a lot of it online. Uh, I forgot to mention it, but pretty much everything here regarding the, the replacement parts other than maybe plug wires and spark plugs and stuff were purchased from uh, Rodney Dickman. Big Fierro guy, has a whole website dedicated to all this stuff and a lot of good information there. So if you are in the Fierro scene, you probably already know, but he's a good, pl good place to uh, purchase parts from, has a lot of knowledge on this stuff. Alright guys, I just finished modifying up the, well, prepping the clutch pedal. So, knocked out the pivot pin, so just cut both sides off and then knocked it out with a hammer. I did bend it back into place, trying to get as close as possible. I think once I add this, it'll kind of get it more aligned. I went ahead and in the areas where I'm going to be welding on, I removed the paint. So, going to go ahead and assemble this. Right in here, we have our new piece. It'll basically just slide in. It's going to be kind of tight fit, so I'm actually going to need to put it in the vise or kind of smack it in just because I think this just needs to be bent a little bit better. And then this piece right here, this pin, goes on the underside right there and just add some more meat to it. So we'll weld that in. And then what we'll do is we'll weld that seam and weld that seam, but we won't get super close to this. I read, well, I think it's metal. I think this is like a replacement clutch just to begin with. I think this is like in the factory plastic. I'll have to double check if this is metal or plastic, but they say don't get too close to it because you might warp it. And then we have the center pin for it, which this is the old bushing. We have the new one, so there'll be less play in there. And then the clutch pedal will be perfectly good to go to be put back into the car. And I will then Shift focus, shift focus to the uh, shifter assembly here. I kind of want to clean it up though because it's kind of grimy and gross from all the years. I wish I had a sandblaster. I'd definitely sandblast this thing. All right, guys, I got that piece hammered into place. So basically that just adds some more rigidity to it. Then I'll add that one here. I got the Alpha Tig 223XI all fired up and going to be adding just some stainless filler, or sorry, uh, gonna be adding some mild filler not, no need for stainless. Once this is all welded up, I'm probably going to grind it down or just paint it, just make it look a little bit, little bit better and protect it from rusting.
All right guys, just finished up welding the clutch pedal here. There's some welds that were a bit dirty because I can't exactly get under the two plates here. So the back side didn't get fully welded, but everything else is fully welded. And uh, actually there's some pretty good welds on it. You can see the weld going straight up all across. Otherwise everything came out pretty nicely. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool down. I might just put it under some water and then I'm gonna give it some paint. Well, oh, actually, before I do that, I do need to get that uh, pivot pin in. So I'm gonna let this cool down and then clean it a little bit more to get the pivot pin. It literally, I could just bolt it in place with that nut, but I'm gonna weld it, just tack it so uh, it's a bit sturdier. And then we can actually go ahead and get the clutch pedal installed. All right, guys, I just got the pivot pin welded in, or I guess tacked in. I just added two tacks accessibly on either side and just tighten it down. So that's all ready to go. I got everything all taped off, dried, and cleaned. So now I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. Unfortunately, the only paint that I have that's black is this stuff, which is pretty high. I mean, it's really high quality, great paint, but it's for like trim pieces and uh, it is what it is. It's gonna have to, you're gonna have to use this, but it's not gonna look bad or anything. This is good for like redoing cowls and stuff like that. Any trim pieces like mirrors or, you know, what you might find on that side of a car, so. I'm gonna go ahead and start painting this up. And then I have a glossy clear coat here that will go on. All right guys, I'm gonna let the pedal dry here. I'm gonna move on to the shifter rebuild here. So I got the two kits here. So one is just for the shifter rebuild kit and the other is for the uh, select arm bushing installation. So I'm gonna follow these instructions here. The gist of it is I need to remove the shifter arm here first, which is just this uh, C-clip. Just use some pliers to get that out. Now it'll slide out like that. I did notice that there's a lot of play in this shaft to here. There's like no bushing in between there, so not sure if this includes something for that, but uh, just something to note. Next, loosen or remove the nut from the cross shaft bolt. Remove the cross shaft bolt. Tilt the shifter pivot assembly over and you should be able to remove this part. So I believe it's this right here that they're talking about. Just need to get, I think that's like a 12 or 13 mil. Just get this nut off and uh, get the shaft out. So use a 13 mil to loosen the nut here. Rotates the shaft bit. So I'm gonna remove this nut and pull this out. You can see here, this hole, the, this guy, we will replace it with the pin here and the two bushings. So for the reassembly, install the new two plastic bushings and the pivot assembly, install the new cross shaft tube. That guy, install the pivot assembly back into the shifter assembly, reinstall the bolt nut, tighten check, or tighten the nut, check for any looseness. If there's sufficient looseness, the kit includes four sh brass shims, these guys. Install one or more shim at a time until there's no play. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy out here. I think I'll just need to remove the reverse lockout uh, switch here. Basically when you go into reverse, this gets engaged for the reverse, or maybe not reverse lockout, maybe it's the reverse lights. Anyways, I'm gonna remove this clip, get this out of the way so I can tilt this a little bit more. All right, guys, I got a new cross shaft bolt in there, and uh, it didn't seem like there was any play in here at all, which is nice. Only thing is, like I said, this actual, the shifter going on this dowel here, this has some play for sure. You can see how much that moves. I'll have to double check and see if there's anything in the kit involving that. Now I'm going to move on to, I believe, the your bushing insulation here, select arm insulation. So it's all this stuff here. I believe it replaces something to do with this guy here, this left to right motion guy. Yeah, like that. Uh, now actually I'm looking at this, moving this. You can see the white bushing right in there. Kind of separates a little bit. So maybe I do need to put a bushing in there. One of the extras. Doesn't feel bad though. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this one. All right guys, I'm gonna be working on the select arm bushing installation, or I guess it's not bushing, this is the, uh, let's see, shifter select lever rebuild. 
So it's a kit that includes all of this stuff here. I'm going to be reading off the website because there are picture instructions and it's much easier to uh, see what you're doing here. So first thing what you're going to do is take off the uh, shifter arm and give you access down here. So what we're going to be doing is removing this pin here. There's a C-clip right there that we're going to need to remove and then pull the pin out that way. And then I believe from the back here, I'll just look at the instructions for that, whatever. But that's the first thing I'm going to do, remove that C-clip. All right, guys, getting that C-clip out was a real pain, but there it is. What I did is I took the shifter, you know, trying to just show you the positioning of it, put it on its side, and then from right there, took long needle pliers and pushed on either side of the C-clip uh, clip there. That just push it out. Now with that C-clip removed on the interior part, I can slide the shaft. Oops, I'm just gonna get a screwdriver to wedge under the other C-clip to kind of just pull it out. There it goes. Let's pull that as far as it forward as it go. It releases from in here from the select shaft. The spring pressure is pushing it the other way right now. So it is now independent. Now what we need to do is remove this whole assembly right here. It's actually pretty easy. The only thing holding it in right now, other than that shaft, was this spring here. So I'll probably need both hands, but I'm going to grab the spring right like that, pull it left and then up, and then this whole thing will come off the dowel. Now with that assembly off, what we're going to need to do is remove this. It is riveted in, so we will go ahead and drill out those two rivets and then pull it out. I believe also the top rivet there will need to drill just so it can uh, be removed. Okay guys, got the rivets drilled out in those two and then the one up here. So I can remove this spring and then I'll just need to tap out the rivet there through. As you can see on the other side, that's where the two rivets are. Alright guys, so this standoff right here, uh, there's that rivet on there, you just drill it out and then you'd use a 964th drill bit to drill that out and you'll need a M5 by 0.8 millimeter tap for this, for the bolt included here. I actually don't have one, so I'm an overnight one, pretty cheap off Amazon or you could just go to a hardware store. In the meantime, I'm going to be working on this guy here. Next step is to grind off the two pins here. And replace them with the included screws and yeah i'm gonna go and start working on that and then you also i believe have to cut off this a little bit just a couple millimeters because once we have the new bolts in there as you can see it would stick out a little bit more rather than how you know close to flush it is there Now guys, I'm going to go ahead and take the now disassembled lever here. We got both of these out here. I'm going to reassemble with the screws that are included. Basically in the photo here, orientate like this, which will sit on that. That's also why we need to grind off this, so I'll probably mark with a sharpie real quick what needs to be removed for it. Let's take the angle grinder to it and chop away. Just about that much. I can hardly see it. There we go. That guy right there. Alright guys, I'm gonna have to review the instructions for this because uh, I needed a lot of spacers to get this to fit. So, I don't know. I'm gonna reread re it, but Basically, this is finished. We'll just need to wait for the tap so I can trap, tap the center part for the retainer. I went ahead and cut off that piece that I had mentioned, so this will bolt up like that. We have this threaded piece that will sit behind it, and these screws that will go ahead and hold in place. Just for the purposes of mock-up, I'm going to go ahead and put it together. I will, again, need to tap the, the top of this to use the bolt to retain it. But I'm going to go ahead and add this, or put this on and see how that fits. 
reread the instructions for this just to make sure I got this right, but yeah, getting closer. I reviewed the instructions for it and it did look like I did it right. Basically all you need to do is allow this to rotate both of them. So that's all good to go. Again, have to wait for the tap for that. In the meantime, I actually took everything back apart and I'm gonna take this off as well. And I'm gonna try cleaning it up best I can with some sandpaper or maybe wire wire brush. And I'm gonna paint this too because it's real grimy, gross as you can you can see. And you know, it's uh, just while you're in, in there syndrome, if I have this all out, I should definitely just put in the effort and clean it up, so. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this pin here. Basically just gotta remove that C-clip and then pull it out and this whole thing will be able to come out. I guess also the, the pivot pin that we replaced, whatever this one was called, the select arm bushing. Once that's out, I'll be able to remove this entirely, start cleaning this up and painting. And guys, there it is. I got it all painted up, except for, I guess, the shifter arm and the these brackets here, not a big deal. I just wanted kind of like the base to be cleaned up and much nicer. I got it reassembled. I got everything all lubed up. The only thing I'm waiting on is still that tap um, for this guy right there. Now I'm gonna put the bushing wherever that ended up. I don't know where it is. And then the little tiny bolt guy. I guess I should probably keep these together so I don't lose them. But that will finish that. That's for the select here, like the left side there. I did mention that there was some play in the shifter handle. I did actually find uh, that you're supposed to add shims to the shifter handle here. So I went ahead and did that and there's like, I can't really do it one handed without teetering this, but there is no play left in this before I was able to move this a little bit side to side, which would pivot on this pin. No, no longer the case. It's also much tighter up here before it would kind of just fall on its own but way stiffer, so that's all good. And it's it's not too stiff to even to move. It's a good amount. And uh, yeah, so everything's all lubed up. I'm just waiting on that tap to finish up this. In the meantime, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to uh, doing some rewiring. I'm just waiting on that tap, so gotta fill up my time doing some other things. Got a new air filter as well, plug boots, spark plugs. Just gotta, be fi gotta fix up all that stuff. Have the clutch pedal fixed already, or got the clutch pedal all assembled. That probably shouldn't have happened, whatever. Can't remember if I showed the finished product, but the uh, clutch pedal is all painted up, clear coated, so no potential to rust. It's got its new pivot pin, and it is ready to go into the car and get installed, actually.